Hello everyone. In this recording, I will talk about the the Python module and the range in Python for index in Python. How we how how it, are we using the for index, and then also if logical statement. And then one more thing in Python, I should tell that this colon sign or symbol. If you have any indentation in Python, you have to use this colon. That is for if statement, that's for the for, while, whatever indentation you need that your command needs, you have to use this colon sign. So uh, otherwise it will give an error. And if, if you use the colon sign and you don't put the indentation, if you have colon but no indentation, then I mean the Python will give you the error. Okay, so saying that, let's start with the with the range in Python. So the range means that let me let me first start with the module. So to start the module, you can say that file and the new file, or you just press the Control N and you will have the module. So this one is very different than the Python the shell itself so for example in shell if you say that 3 times 4 3 times 4 it will give the result but here it will not calculate it unless you run it so if you see that format I mean that run uh, the run module it will ask you to save it and then you can save it uh, anywhere you want say that you save it with name 1 and then when you run it so it will run but since you don't have any print command it will not print anything on the window so what you can do is that you can say that x is 3 times 4 and then print x okay and then you can run it run the module or or you can press the f5 and then you can see it can it will print out the result on the on the idle shell environment so this is how you are working in the uh, in the module so also the same things apply here you can put the command with using this pound symbol and you can put the, the you can import your numpy as np or whatever you want so the one of the the commands in Python is the range. So range is, let me just do it here, so that you have a range of 3. So what it does is that it starts to create a value from 0 to 3. So let me write it here, say that you have a range of 3. So it's the Python output is 0, 1, and then 2. So it stops as in the similar to np arrange command. So it starts from 0 and ends at 1 before, excluding the last one. So it will not count the 3. And one more thing here is that in, in Python, indexing starts at 0. What I mean at zero, let me give you one example. Say that I have a A as one, two, three. Okay. So if I want to check the A1, it will give me the two. Okay. If I check the A0, so it will give me the one. So the indexing in Python starts at zero, so it is, which is very different than the MATLAB. So your indexing starts at the zero. So this is the how how range works. So you just it just creates the numbers, and also you can put a range something like this one, very similar to NP range. You can see that range from zero to three in steps of one. So it will be that the output will be zero one two. Okay, again it will exclude the last one, and then it will just start from zero to three in I mean one step okay so that is how you are using the range in Python so let's look at the 
as well. now we will do a small example uh, using the for command in python so for is that if you are trying to create a loop the for is your best friend let me just give you one example say that i is 1 i look for i square i is 2 i look for i square and i is 3 i look for i square okay see so if you run it so i have to print it yes print i square here and then print the i square value here and then print the i square value here okay so you can see you have the when i is one the i oh sorry that that's good that i remembered that in python instead of the i mean this a uh, cap symbol for squaring you have to use this i mean double star so or asterisk so this is the a python so in python squaring is done by okay this one is important in python so okay let's run it again so you have one you have four and you have nine so you can see that it just runs it in the loop so but you can use the for command in python and you can see that for i or x you can say in the range of so we started at one so i will start at one and i will stop at four since python excludes the four and then i will go i will say that go steps in in step of one okay and then never forget to put this a colon sign otherwise it will give an error so when you put the colon when you press the enter you say you can see that it leaves indentation but if you don't leave indentation and run your code it will give an error again so you have to leave the indentation if you have this colon a symbol okay so that for i in range 1 to 4 in steps of 1 i would say that just x is i to the power of 2 okay and then print x so what i'm saying is that for every i in the range of 1 to 4 the 4 is excluded so let me just put a comment here and then Okay, so in every, for every value in the range of 1 to 3, it will run the loop. So first it will be 1, it will take the square, and then it will go to the second one, 2, it will take the square, and then the third one. The i takes the values in the range. So it just takes the value in the range in the order, in the sequence. So first 1, then 2, then 3. Okay, so let's run it and then see how it works. So I'll just put them in a command so that it doesn't print it twice. Okay, let's press it. You can see that it does the same work. So it just prints the square of the values. This is how for command works. So then, okay, so I will use the if and the if logical statement in Python. But before moving that, I should tell that you can define this 1, 4, 1 here as well. You can say that x is the range of 1, 4, sorry, 1, 4, 1. Let's put this one as, for example, b instead of x. I will say that for i in range 1, 4, 1, but instead of that one, I will say that for b. Okay, so it will just take the first value and then 
square and then second value and then third value okay it will do the same thing let's run it okay you see it can it will do the same thing here but i here as i told it takes the values in the in the vector of b so b is a vector and then in this case it is list they call this object as list in python so that's the reason that you have to learn the objects in python as the list then dictionary then you have the triple and you have set you have array and then anyway so it takes the every value in it and then takes the square of it okay and since we are done in this part let's move on to the for and the if logical statements together